afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan V. Hill, and I am the policy analyst for the City of Albuquerque City Councilor Cynthia Borrego, District 5. And Councilor Borrego has been actively working to help Albuquerque clean up and show respect for their city. Um, so one of the things that she's working with is the Illegal Dumping Partnership, and that's between the City of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County. And on Saturday the 18th, September 18th, the Illegal Dumping Partnership is hosting a slog event. And the slog event will be for people that want to just get out of their house and pick up trash as they go walking or jogging with your pets. And there are swag bags available through the city and the county if you had registered previously. But even if you haven't registered, please participate and show pride in your city. Because I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, my mom did not want to walk behind me and pick up my trash. And she taught me to take it to the trash can with my very own feet, my very own hands. And um, I live in it with as, as mouse free as possible, <laughs> thanks to my mom and these lessons I learned. So the Illegal Dumping Partnership put out this book, these books. And these are the Carlos Coyote and Friends books. There's one in English. Clean up with Carlos Coyote. There's one in Spanish, a limpiar con Carlos y sus amigos. And we have desert adventures, and this has puzzles for you to do. Uh, you can pick these up at the Bernalillo County Solid Waste Department. And we also have mystery in the desert. Also the city of Albuquerque Parks and Recreation Department is passing out these books for anyone who's interested. So The Mystery in the Desert is a comic book. It has characters like Louie the Litterbug, who's actually a bird, Louie the Litter Bird. And you know how birds are, they leave a little present for you everywhere you go, especially pigeons. So we don't wanna be like the pigeons. They're not very popular sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna read Alampiar con Carlos y sus amigos para en inglés because that's my first language, <laughs> so I'll make it easy. So, my friend is helping me film this, and he's gonna show the pictures while I read the story. We'll make sure you can see the pictures of Carlos and learn about his character. This bag, by the way, is compostable, so we'll talk about what these different types of things are that I'm so elegantly wearing for you all today, my new hat. Okay. So, what is illegal dumping? Illegal dumping is dumping waste on public or private property that is not licensed or permitted for waste. It is unlawful to deposit any type of waste material in a place that is not permitted to receive waste. That would be like putting trash under your bed, boys and girls, instead of in the trash can. That's not the, the permitted place. Illegal dumping can occur in areas such as vacant lots, along roadways, alleys, city, county, or national parks, ravines, those are those ditches, construction sites, river levees, sewers, or even waterways. In other words, it can occur anywhere. So we'll pretend a fish is saying this part. How would a fish talk? Who is littering? Did you know that 75% of Americans admit that they have littered? The most common Offenders are men between the ages of 18 to 34 years of age. You know who you are. But remember, anyone can litter or illegally dump waste. And you see there in the desert, there's all those tire, the tires that people leave. Those tires don't go away. And in countries where they don't take care of them, they catch on fire. Next page. 
to here the legal dumping partnership is really working to recycle those tires for us why is illegal dumping a problem illegal dumping is a serious problem because everyone suffers from it farmers suffer because fields and crops are destroyed businesses suffer because extra trash pickups can cost several hundred dollars and it can be passed on to consumers entire neighborhoods suffer because trash is unsightly and it also harbors rats and other vermin. It can lead to decline in property values and loss of community respect. So other people don't find it as attractive as you might on my beautiful outfit. The environment suffers because toxic pollutants are released into streams, woodlands, wetlands, and all environments are harmed. I don't know if you've heard this, but sometimes fish will eat the, the waste and then it kills them. Public health and safety suffer because sharp or toxic objects can cause infection or physical injury. Next page. This next page is really old west. You'll see when I show you the big reveal. Dun, 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 dun. What are the penalties of illegal dumping? What does this remind you of? This jail looks like a place Billy the Kid would be put, stuck in. Maybe even just sit there without clean water. In the state of New Mexico, it is illegal to litter or legally dump waste. It is a serious offense and can result in criminal prosecution. That means that you'll have to go to that someone would have to go to court for littering and then pay a penalty. Depending on the amount and type of waste, one can be charged with a misdemeanor. And that's a pretty serious charge. We, we have a lawyer here, he could come and tell us about it. But um, the next highest charge is a felony and you can be charged with a felony if you dump something very toxic, like sometimes paint. Fines may be as little as a traffic ticket or up to thousands of dollars. If I had a thousand dollars, I would want to maybe get a new hat <laughs> or go to an island, but not pay a littering fine. What is recycling? So that's what I know a lot about because I recycle. And I taught other people to recycle at one point. And I'll tell you, everything I'm wearing, except for one thing, is not recyclable. Can you tell what it is? I'll tell you at the end. I have these, my favorite drinks, this, and this, and then that, this. Okay. What is recycling? Recycling is the practice of reusing items that would otherwise be discarded as waste. Recycling prevents useful material resources from being wasted and reduces the consumption of raw materials. So there's different types of things that we have in our world. Some things we call consumables, and that's what we actually put into our body or on our hair and after we use it, it's just gone. So those are cons the consumption means that we're, that we're using those things. And then there's things that aren't reusable, that aren't consum consumption products. Anyway, so we can, we can reduce the consumption of raw materials like this. This is made out of t aluminum if we recycle it. So if I just threw it into the dump, the aluminum would be gone until our people, our great, great, great grandchildren go out and dig it up because they don't have any more aluminum. Um, but if I recycle it, then it can be used again for another can. And it is. They're actually worth money. Like, I think, you know, five cents a can if you recycle them. So sometimes you'll see people going through the trash they're looking for these guys so that they can make a little money. 
to get himself a hamburger. What types of material can you recycle? Let me see if I'm changing my pages. Look at this, all of the materials. There's so many different things that we use and these are all different types of like fabric or material. So some of these are actually really dangerous poisons. And if you look at the picture, we have yes stain, batteries. Batteries can be a very dangerous poison, believe it or not. And if they are improperly disposed of, they leak into the ground, they leak into the water, and people can get sick from that. So it's really good to, to put those in the right way and to recycle them in the correct manner. But these do not go in your green box. You have to, there's a special place they go. Paper, dun dun dun, very recyclable. These are made from trees. It's an organic or natural material. Cardboard, what's that made out of? Trees, right? Or you can make it out of bamboo, which is like a tall reed. Or you can make it out of um, hemp, which is a type of plant, like a weed. Um, glass, very recyclable. And glass is made out of sand, believe it or not, like fired sand. So totally natural, you can recycle it. But not in your green can. It goes in a special place because it's so sharp. And you knew that, right? Like, because you get cut and it, then you're like, that was painful. So put the glass in a separate place. Plastic is recyclable. But here's a little known thought. Plastic has to weigh enough to be recycled. If it's very light, they don't, no one wants to recycle it because it's just not worth it. It doesn't have enough material. Tires. Tires are recyclable, but they also have some toxic things in them that will burn. So they have to go in a special place. Um, I've heard that you can make roads out of tires. There's lots of things that that rubber can go towards. It doesn't just need to go sit in a big trash heap where it's a hazard. Things that are not recyclable. Guess what? Pizza boxes. Pizza boxes, cardboard. You think, I can recycle that. But when something is really greasy and dirty, they can't, it can't really be like reclaimed. It's just, it's just like contaminated with oils and so we can't do the pizza boxes. If you wanted to do a pizza box, you've got to make, make sure that it's lined with tin foil so it didn't get greasy. Styrofoam. Styrofoam is a weird type of plastic. It's like a spun plastic and it, there's not much you can do with it. And in fact, I would kind of recommend not getting styrofoam ever. But, and if you do get it, don't microwave it because it has some uh, properties that you don't want to you don't want to put in a microwave, it'll turn into a gremlin or some sort of monster. So, food bags, those are too tiny. They're just tiny little things and, and like we can't really get them and make them into a new thing. Light bulbs. Light bulbs are made up of like 12 different materials. If you ever look at one, you see there's what, this little wire and then the glass and then the the metal and we can't separate all that stuff. That's what we call a mixed material. Hazardous waste like antifreeze and flea killer. Those are chemicals. They are there to kill things or to make highly complex engines run. <laughs> and um, you know, they're just very dangerous to try to mess with, they're flammable and you can't recycle them. Medical waste. So the problem with medical waste, everyone is, <laughs> if you didn't know this, like humans are so complex, our bodies have like a thousand things going on and you don't know what's in them really. And so we just, we really just try to like put them in a safe place and let nature take its course of killing whatever's on them. So we don't
don't mess with a medical waste. And in fact, if you have medical waste, make sure that you dispose of it properly. Don't, it doesn't go to the trash either. Because, you know. I don't know if you've ever been to a hospital or to a doctor and you see they wear gloves and stuff. There's reasons. And now with COVID, you know that especially. Like, we really try to be um, conscientious of what our... Uh, all of this micro world of germs and trying to keep it, you know, in a, in a safe way. So where and how to recycle, back to the story, this word button. Recycling Collection Center. I was gonna tell you about where and how to recycle. Look at all of Carlos Coyote's friends, all together just having a nice time chipping in, doing this thing. And, and this type of trash, everyone, it's really not very sticky or, or um, you know, like covered in grease or anything. It's just like paper that is dry and doesn't have grease on it. And it's not, it's not like you're messing around in horrible, wormy trash. <laughs> These are the things that you use every day. So... Call your local collection center to begin a recycling plan. But see, we already have that in Albuquerque. But if you don't have it, you can make one with your family and with your, your city. Make sure your city and town has a pickup service in place. If, and a lot of my neighbors, they, even though we have a collection service, they don't use it. And I don't know why, because then their trash cans are like bubbling over with all of this waste, especially at Christmas, and they could just have a recycling and then they wouldn't have to worry. If you live far away from this service, you may have to bring your own recycling into a center for processing. Like people in the mountains, they do that. At home is where you can make the biggest difference to the amount you recycle. Make sure you have a recycle bin in your home. Keep it in an obvious place so you won't forget to use it. Talk to everyone in your household about where your recycling, recycling storage point is and what can be recycled. I had a friend once that had it way outside. And I didn't know, I just, I just set it all on the table and waited for him to take it out piece by piece. It's kind of funny. But, that's how I wanted to do it, so it worked. So our next page, I think this is the last page of Olympiar Juan Carlos y sus amigos and his friends. Carlos, going like this, you see his hand? Recycling is the process of turning waste into materials, into new products. This is how to practice the three R's. R is for recycling. Reduce. The best way to manage waste is not to produce it. This can be done by shopping carefully and being aware of what is reusable. So I do this by taking a to-go container to restaurants for myself. That way, like a plastic container, a Tupperware, that way I don't have to ask for a new piece of material when I go to restaurants. Um, I try to buy things that are in cardboard in a recyclable container like these drinks, not in a, sometimes in the lighter plastics that you can't recycle. So that's me reducing my uses, but I bet you can find some ways to do that also. Reuse. It makes economic and environmental sense to reuse products. Sometimes it takes creativity too. So reusing is a little difficult sometimes, but um, you can get reusable grocery bags. The, the, the city gave out a number of them. Um, that's really the main way we're practicing it now, but you can also bring your own cup to get cocoa at the, at the um, coffee or tea shop with your parents. So these are the three R's, and they really make sense as far as the waste cycle. And that is everything with Carlos and his friends as they clean up the community. But I'm going to tell you their names because we never learned it.
So the funny thing here that I'm noticing is what I thought was a fish, this pink thing, this is a snake. I never seen a girl snake that looked that pretty, but her name is Sarah the snake. And then we have Johnny the jackrabbit. And these are all creatures we have in New Mexico. Lizzie the lizard. I have a friend with a tattoo of a lizard because lizards can really climb. She was, she's a rock climber. And Carlos the coyote, our favorite. We, I, and you can see coyotes every day in New Mexico. And if you do, be kind to them because this was their home first. And just let them cross and go back to their pack. <laughs> and hopefully they will uh, find some other natural things to eat and not be getting into the trash in our plastic if we're doing our recycling right. So these are the books put out by the Illegal Dumping Partnership, which uh, several counselors are, take, are involved with. Um, Counselor Borrego is working to improve uh, our standard of littering in Albuquerque to keep our city, show our pride here. And, um, and also we shouldn't be dumping in the arroyos. Those are places where animals live and where we like to bicycle and play. I know I do, I like to play there when it's not rushing with water. And then you might run into La Llorona. This is a totally different story. So as far as my outfit, I'm just gonna go through it. These, I already said, are recyclable. They're actually worth money, tin, comes from the earth like gold, and there's only so much tin on an aluminum, aluminum, uh, on the earth. So we appreciate them. They're very easy to recycle and turn into new things for us. New cans even. This is just a piece of paper, probably wood. Comes from wood. That's the main thing that we make uh, paper out of. But there are really some good other uh, um, alternatives. This. Believe it or not, this is the most interesting thing that I'm wearing today. And I can put like little, you know, snuts in here when I get hungry and carry it around with me. But no, this bag is compostable. So it's not recyclable. It means compostable means it's made out of a plant product and we can actually bury it and it makes the soil richer because it will degrade it becomes compostable, it goes back to the soil. So anytime you have like strawberry clippings or the potatoes, any food that you didn't eat, except for meat, meat's a little trickier to compost. You have to have flies to do it for you. But, um, so even the flies play a role. But like all of your vegetable stuff, you can bury it. And then when you go back, like a year later, it turns, it makes like a rich soil for flowers and things. And this bag, really useful, is a compostable bag. So we can make things that aren't plastic. Otherwise, if this was plastic, it would have been just trash. And then the one thing I'm wearing that is not in the, not in the reuse, reduced recycle category is, you guessed it, my hat. And I'm gonna keep this hat for as long as possible because I know that it has no, it has no life after, after <laughs> being my um, cap. So it is, it is plastic, but it's such a small piece of lightweight plastic. You get these at hotel rooms that, um, that it won't, it won't be turned into any other products. So I'm really careful when I go to hotels not to open these things from their little covers because I know I'm just making something for myself that is trash, plain and simple. But we're very lucky to live in this world with all of these wonderful um, ways of, of, uh, of packaging our, our foods and sharing our food and our um, products that people have so creatively made. And I would really appreciate if we showed that, if we demonstrated our um, gratitude for this uh, world that we've been brought to here in, in Albuquerque by disposing of our trash responsibly. <laughs> so thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure. Um, 
have a happy Lavender Libros Wednesday and do the illegal dumping partnership on Saturday. Thank you. Bye.